Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Amanda, I'm one of the educators with the Organization for Bat Conservation and we're here in the Bat Zone. Thank you for joining us, we're so excited. Happy Bat Appreciation Day. And today we're launching a campaign that we're calling Save the Shorties. Currently we're working really hard to rescue 51 short-tailed fruit bats. Where they are right now, unfortunately, they're not able to stay at the home that they're currently at. They need a new home. So here at the Organization for Bat Conservation, we had a big team meeting and decided that we're going to work so hard to raise some money so that we can get a brand new flight in uh, enclosure for them here. Because 51 short-tailed fruit bats. It's a lot of new bats. And so we need some money to help take care of them, get their immunizations, get some vet costs covered and food. So. We are already at $3,000. Thank you so much to everybody who's been contributing. Any amount that you can donate is so wonderful and really appreciated. And we're going to uh, talk more about where you can see a link to help donate if you'd like to after this video once we meet some short-tailed fruit bats. So you can come with me into the enclosure here. All right. So the short-tailed fruit bats that we have are really amazing animals. And they're going to fly around quite a bit. A lot of times when I'm doing tours in our bat zone, people are surprised that we go in here and they think that they're going to get caught in my hair or fly all over. They do fly all over, but as many of you know, because a lot of you join us quite often from explore.org, thank you, that bats can see in two different ways our micro bats bats that have little eyes and big ears because they use echolocation. And so you can see a lot of them, right, hopefully right now, some of them are a little sleepy, flying around me and they're able to avoid me. I'm a big obstacle and all the other cool things that are hanging here in the enclosure. A lot of times we get questions about what weird objects are like this, why are they in here? We try to introduce new things into their enclosures to help change the environment a bit. Change is good, it's healthy, and it keeps them interested in what's going on. And we stuff some lettuce in here because a lot of our fruit bats really like crunchy water or lettuce. It's really fun for them. Um, so I'm gonna look for a short-tailed fruit bat to show us a little what they look like a little closer. They are really small. The average size of a short-tailed fruit bat is about 15 to even 25 grams. You have more grams of sugar than that in your 16 ounce bottle of Coca-Cola. So they are tiny little bats. And they, as their name suggests, eat fruit. And they are found in uh, the southern parts of Mexico, Central America, South America, and they largely eat fruit and they will eat fruits that have a lot of seeds. So for some of you that have joined us a few times before, we've talked about the role of fruit bats in helping our rainforests and our jungles to regrow. Even though these bats are so tiny, they eat a lot of fruit every single night and the kind of fruit that they eat is really important. They eat fruit with anywhere between 350 to 2,500 seeds on total, in the total night. That's how much seeds that they're eating that they're either spitting out or that might be coming out of the other end. And as I'm sure some of you might guess where this is going, when seeds go into the ground with some bat fertilizer, get some sunlight and rain, that helps us to have new forests grow. And our forests are so important for our world. Of course we get oxygen from our rainforests. 40% of the world's oxygen comes from the rainforest. We also get a lot of raw materials. Medicine comes from the rainforest, the fruits that we love and enjoy. And little bats like this are out there helping us to have our forests grow, especially after we cut them down. A lot of the times in those places, animals don't want to go into big open places that humans just cut down all the habitat. Right? That makes sense. There's not any trees there, and trees provide shelter from storms, place to hide from predators, place to get food. But bats are, fruit bats are incredibly important seed dispersers because they are flying poop machine sometimes and they're flying over these places and out come seeds like crazy and they're going in right behind us and helping us to have new forests. So we're really grateful for these animals and it is so cool to be able to show people here what fruit, tail, um, fruit bats look like and especially leaf nose bats look like. So our short-tailed 
fruit bats are often called leaf nose bats. They are in the family Phyllostomidae, or we just call it the Phyllostomids for short. And that group of bats are called the leaf nose bats, and they do something really amazing. Not only are they the most diverse group of bats in the world, they range in all different sizes from the things that they eat, places that they live, but they often have leaf nose structures like this that you see right there. A lot of times when I show little kids that come into the bats and I ask them, what does this look like? And they think it looks like a rhino horn. Well, it's really soft and fleshy. It's kind of like this part of your ear, the pinna, I believe, of your ear. And they can move it in all different directions. And what they do is pretty cool. I'm gonna give you a little a couple hints and then see if you can guess. So this is a fruit bat and they're flying around at night and it's a micro bat. So micro bats rely on echolocation. If they're flying around with big chunks of fruit in their mouth and it's super dark out, they're gonna need to use their echolocation. So if they can't make the calls out of their mouths like a lot of our bats do in the United States, like our big brown bat that some of you have seen before, what do you think they do with this nose? echolocate. They echolocate out of their noses and they can make all kinds of different sounds or frequency sounds in order to help them see different objects and they move that nose in different directions just as if we would move a flashlight around to see what's out there in the environment and that helps them to see where they're going which is pretty amazing. So our phyllostomid bats, our leaf nose bats, we have a couple, two different species here and one of them are our short-tailed fruit bats. We have about 30 of them here in this enclosure, so if we were to get 51 more, we absolutely need a new enclosure for them. And as some of you might also know, our organization, the Organization for Bat Conservation, is moving to Pontiac, Michigan. We're so excited about it. Pontiac is coming back and it's doing so well, and we're excited to be a part of that. We're going from roughly 2,000 square feet to 10,000 square feet. So we're gonna have space to put in a really nice big enclosure in for our new bat friends that we hope to have a home here with us at OBC, or the Organization for Bat Conservation. So uh, our short-tailed fruit bats are really cool in what they do. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me how bats, they're, how their babies, what they look like, how they're born. Of course, bats are mammals like we are, so they give live birth, they don't lay eggs, and their babies nurse from their moms. Short-tailed fruit bats, like a lot of other bats, have babies that are about 25% of mom's body size. Okay, so for some of you moms that are out there, you should be gasping right now because you should know your babies were not 25% of your body size when they were born. They were probably about 1% or less. Yeah, that's a big baby and it's pretty cool. Uh, even though they're so small, they are very powerful animals, especially short-tailed fruit, fruit bats have big, nice, strong back muscles and the moms, they carry their young babies around for the first couple weeks before they can learn to fly. It takes about 13 weeks for them to learn to fly and what's really cool, short-tailed fruit bats, when they have their babies, they are born with their eyes open and they have fur. That's not very common in the bat world. A lot of bats, uh, when they have their babies, they're born blind and with their eyes closed, but their babies are ready to go and they develop really quickly. And moms, they need to nurse and they eat a lot of food when they're nursing twice what other bats are eating that aren't nursing. So that means that our moms are not only, our bat moms are not only really important for spreading seeds, because of they're eating so much, much more than all the other bats, but also they're helping the bat population to regrow. And they have about one pup a year. And that will usually be when the fruit is coming out, which tends to be between June and August in the places that they're found, which again are in central, in central to central Mexico, sorry, to northern parts of South America. And Again, they're eating so many seeds, and so it's really awesome. So when we have people coming in here and learning about these really cool bats, we talk about how important they are to our ecosystems. And our rainforests are disappearing, and we need them so badly. And if you would like to help support bats that live in the rainforest, think about the products that you buy. Palm oil is a really big issue for animals that are living in the rainforest. We plant huge, massive fields of just 
palm oil. And so if you look at the products you buy, try to avoid purchasing anything that has palm oil in it or coffee and tea. That's also really commonly grown in the rainforest. When we buy something that's called shade grown coffee, it helps to support farmers that are working to incorporate other plants into the places that they're growing our coffee. And having a diversity of plants is really important for having a diversity of animals. So that's a great way that you can help if you are interested in helping the bats out in the wild, like our short-tailed fruit bats, which I'm gonna put away now. You can see if can fly away maybe, or maybe she just wants to climb up on the wall. There we go. So we have, oh yeah. <laughs> and I'll, we can take a quick look at the other species of bat that we have in here, which is another phyllostomid or a leaf nose bat. And this species is called a Jamaican leaf nose bat. And Jamaican leaf nose bats are often found in the Caribbean. They're really our only fruit eating bat in the United States. They occur in some parts of very southern parts of Florida. And we otherwise, we most of our bats in the United States eat insects. For those of you that were finishing my sentence, yes, insects. But Jamaican leaf nose bats, <laughs> there we go, they eat fruit and they eat a lot of fruit and maybe you're able to see that leaf nose structure there that's really similar to what our short-tailed fruit bats leaf nose structure looks like. And Jamaican leaf nose bats, they are often found in places where our short-tailed fruit bats are. So not only are they hanging out together here at the bat zone, but they also hang out together in the wild, which is pretty cool to think about. And so our Jamaican leaf nose bats, just like our short-tailed fruit bats, will also sometimes pollinate. And so for our friends that have joined us here many times before, I'm sure you've heard us talk about pollination. Our bats in, throughout the world pollinate over 300 different kinds of fruits. A lot of things like mangoes, bananas, um, and avocados, which I love avocados. So when fruit isn't available, they will drink the nectar at the bottom of flowers. And because they're mammals, they have lots of fur, just like we do, maybe some of us more than others, but we have lots of fur. And that fur picks up the pollen on the flower, and when they fly around to other flowers to drink, that pollen will move around, help mixing up that genetic material so that flowers can reproduce, make fruits that we love to eat. So these bats are really important for that. And here we go. I think now we've got a better shot of that leaf nose structure. And maybe you can see a couple of differences between the short-tailed fruit bats leaf nose structure and the Jamaican leaf nose bats um, leaf nose structure and their leaf nose has got a couple extra folds here on the side and it's not quite as long for their body size as the short tail fruit bats leaf nose and so it's pretty cool that even though that they're both in the same family they're both phyllostomid bats that you can see some differences and some similarities yeah all right, and then maybe get a chance to see, I know the lighting's not always great in here, but that there are some white stripes going down the Jamaican leaf nose <laughs> bat's face. There we go. Let's see if we get a chance to see that. <laughs> and I think I'm waking a lot of them up. So if you want a chance to see what they look like when they fly around, this is a good time to do so. I'll walk around again so everybody can see. So something else really cool about the bats here, a lot of them can hover, which really helps them like hummingbirds need to hover when they're drinking nectar from flowers and so it's pretty cool when I'm in here walking around sometimes they get really curious to see who's in here with them and they'll hover right in front of me and kind of check me out and then fly around to other sides which is pretty cool so here we are yeah so again, you can see them all flying around, and it is really exciting to think that we're going to get more enclosure space for our bats, and especially for our short-tailed fruit bats and our Jamaican leaf nose bats that need a lot of space to fly around because they are such excellent flyers. So again, if you are excited about the cool animals that you got to see here today, please help us to raise money for the short-tailed fruit bats that really need a home. Uh, our goal is to reach $10,000 and to do it soon so we can give them a home as soon as possible when we move into our new place. So thank you so much for helping us and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye. Bye everyone.